Part of the hacker mentality is the building and the breaking and the exploring of technologies and working with different things. I'm gonna show you a little project that I worked on this weekend, made myself a little remote access Trojan tool that I can drop onto any network I can grab a USB ether or an ethernet uh, cable with or even using Wi-Fi if that is available. That's all starting right now. Okay, what is this thing that I've built, you might be asking yourself, and it sounds really interesting, at least hopefully it does to you. Well, I had the idea, well, I wanna do stuff. I always wanna be exploring. I always wanna be doing something interesting with my time and that I can give back to the community. And I thought to myself, you know what would be neat is if uh, I've recently started playing around with Raspberry Pis and there's a, a, a device called a Raspi Zero, very small form factor computer that you can connect to just about anything, right? It has all the normal capabilities, I thought. That would make a great little inside person on a, on a network if I could get that connected somehow. And then the wheels started turning. Oh, that, that actually might be a fun project. Okay, well, what does that mean? What do I need to do? Well, I thought I want it to be reasonably, reasonably cheap, not too expensive, 50-ish dollars, as well as being small and concealable. I also wanted to be able to connect to it from anywhere in the world using something like my laptop or even my mobile device like my cell phone. That, would be, that was a major... A component that I wanted to have uh, those capabilities for. Also, I wanted to have some way in which to uh, work with it if it didn't have ready power. How do, how do I power the thing if there's no good place to put it? So those were the major, even though arbitrary kind of constraints that I put around myself. And with that, I built myself this little device right here. This is my Raspi Zero, and you can see it, the board inside there with the pin out. It just has a little plastic case on it. And the only thing it has on it is a USB cable for power and this USB Ethernet adapter that I bought to give it Ethernet capabilities. That's a pretty small little device. You can see it against the size of my hand. It's not much bigger than a credit card, minus the cables, right? That as well as this little person right here, which is a $6 battery pack that I bought at Walmart. Right? No big deal. These components all wrapped up in a ball. Yes, there's the ball of, I call it the Raspberry Spy. <laughs> because ultimately, if I drop this thing on your network, then, well, there you go. I hopefully now have connectivity into that network. I've got a nice little pivot that I can start scanning for hosts, running exploits, things of that nature. I've got an inside person on your network. That was the idea anyway, so really cool. So how did I build this? Well, first of all, let's um, let's get up some, let's do some shopping, right? Here is Amazon. Here's the kit that I bought, and it was $37.99. It took three days to get to my house because Prime is no longer a thing, apparently. Thanks, COVID. And uh, it came with all the cool components that you see here. A lot of stuff that you're not seeing on, on this video, but I did use to connect it like that USB hub, allowed me to connect it to a monitor, mouse, and keyboard, so I could get everything set up really easily. So I liked this kit. Uh, another big win on this was it came with an SD card and it had pre-installed with the uh, Noobs operating system, which is basically um, a version of uh, Raspbian or Raspberry Pi OS, something like that. It seems to be very similar to that. So I had all the pieces I needed. It was a little more than I wanted to spend for this entire kit, but I got a lot of extras with it. So I went ahead and pulled the trigger. I'm still underneath budget at this point. Then I had to get the battery, right? So I actually didn't buy it online, but here it is online at walmart.com. $6.88, that's what it was in the store. I just ran to my local Walmart, which I can literally walk to from my house. And uh, it was $6.88, I said, yeah, that, that's easy. I ran this thing for four hours, and you can see there's like some little LEDs right here to indicate how much power is in there. Four means fully charged. It, after four hours, it had three LEDs lit, so it only took one LED away. So that's pretty great that it has that low power. This thing should be powered for quite some time off of this very simple and cheap solution to do that. The other thing was the ethernet adapter. Needed that ethernet adapter, 1179. Again, not breaking the bank. And I think well, all in total, we're running right around 56 dollars, something like that, right? So right there in that sweet spot that I was looking for, I would have liked it to see it under 50 bucks, but now that I have all these components, if I were to buy another one, I would could totally could get that under 50 bucks. So there are the pieces physically that I needed to do this. Then there were some, some software considerations. 
to get connectivity, I needed something that faced the internet. And I thought, well, there are cloud solutions that do that for you. I happen to be an Amazon subscriber. I should be able to use their AWS solution to make this happen. EC2 was a great um, way to do that. Here I have the instance running um, right here. Even though it says stopped, it should not be stopped. Let me refresh that page. It should be running. And yes, it is running. Excellent. And all I've done is basically, I, I installed Kali uh, on that instance. It's just running Kali and I can SSH into it. I also had to create a, a rule for allowing the connection from the Raspi Zero, the Ras Spy. <laughs> I'm so funny. <laughs> back into that EC2 instance so that it could grab that on, on a different port other than port 22, which is the standard port for SSH. I went with 443 because that is standard uh, kind of internet traffic. It wouldn't have been caught by an IDS. IT, it's, it's unlikely that it would. Let me put it that way. Unlikely that it would be caught by some firewall or device to be blocking it. So with that, plus with NCAT, uh, the newest version of NetCat, I can use SSL encryption to encrypt the tunnel because it's going across the internet. I don't want that in plain text. So I'm gonna encrypt that tunnel and be able to grab all this stuff. Once that's all said and done, all I did was basically say, hey, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put on the, on the Raspi, create a cron job, which is just a scheduled task to say every two minutes, try to reach this IP and send it using Netcat, sending an encrypted shell back to that IP. If it doesn't answer, whatever. If it does, great, create that connection, and I'm in business. Also, I wanted to be able to connect using my cell phone into that because I want to be anywhere in the world, no matter what, I can be on my cellular data plan and gain access to this. I'm running a terminal emulator called Termux. Now, to show you this, as you can see, looking at my phone would be a little difficult on our screen. I have a cool app called Dex, which is, uh, I have a Samsung device. If I plug in my... My little uh, phone here, I'm gonna move this out of the way. You'll see I'm gaining access into the actual system and then Dex is firing up. And after that, I should be able to, once it gets started, should just take a second. There it goes. Uh, it wants me to log in. Well, I'll do facial recognition, how about that? There we go, now we're logged in. Hey, security, right? It's a great thing. So I've got the Termux terminal right here waiting for us. And you'll see I've got my, uh, my C2C uh, uh, SSH key pen. This is going to be the, the um, key for logging into AWS. So I just do SSH-I and it is C2. And then I give it the username, Kali, Kali, at, and then... I had to get a static IP for this because otherwise it's going to change and you don't want that. That kind of defeats the purpose of what we're doing. So I had to get an elastic IP, which is cool because it's free for any running instance on EC2. If you're not running the instance and it costs you 0 0.006 cents or something minute, it's very, very small. Uh, so as long as the instance is running, the IP is free. If it's not turned on, it's, it's extremely cheap. So I think I've spent 90 cents on this <laughs> as of the filming of this episode. All right, so let me put my IP in there, which I have memorized. And, uh, oh, and if you're not seeing that, it's because we're blurring it out because that's my private IP. I don't want you seeing that. <laughs> let me get logged in. There we go. Firing away. And as you can see, I have successfully SSH into this. This is running ZSH, which I'm not a huge fan of because of that whole, well, I say I'm not a huge fan of. For our intents and purposes, kind of tries to predict what you're going to type. I don't want to do that. So now... We just need to start the listener. Oh, actually, first things first, we need to plug this thing in. I happen to have a USB cable right here and an ethernet cable. I got that, there we go. Let me just, I'm just gonna power this. Now this could be being, as I look for my USB port here, give me two seconds. I'm still here, I swear. <laughs> oh, I'm going to the wrong port. There it is, there we go. Now, that's gonna, gonna need a second to power up, but I do wanna tell you, that when it comes to the powering of this thing, like I said, I can plug it into the battery, which makes it super, super portable, right? Especially if you're running on Wi-Fi, just pre-configure that Wi-Fi access. Maybe somebody has a, I don't know, an open wireless or they are giving out there. Maybe they have a guest network. Could be a great pivot into their production network. You never know what you're gonna find out there. Maybe people have a bad uh, pre-shared key that you can easily crack using 
other means, alpha networks, that kind of stuff, using your other techniques. But if you had that capability, you go Wi-Fi, but wireless is great too. But if you just run behind some desktop, plug this into a USB port, plug in an ethernet cable, well, there you go. You've got some pretty straightforward access and thing. Plus you saw how small it was, pretty easily concealed in someone's string of spaghetti that they most likely have running out of the back of their desk or tucked away somewhere where it's not easily visible to the random passerby. So again, part of the whole idea of what I was building here. Small form factor, not bringing attention to itself, and if necessary, or if the, the mood strikes, we're gonna go for a little um, completely wireless solution to get on that network. All right, now that uh, that should be going, it should be booting up, let's just, just take a second. I need to start the uh, the listener on this side so we can catch that shell as it tries to connect. So what do we need to do? I am using NCAT. I'm gonna need to run sudo on this. So just run NCAT and I'm gonna do dash dash SSL dash key. And this is gonna look for the key that I created. I generated using open SSL, pretty straightforward. If you're wanting true step-by-step, -step, how did I do everything? I actually wrote a blog post about this. We're gonna to link to that down below. So if you need that, Go check that out. It's gonna give you every little piece of the puzzle for if you wanna recreate this or maybe even make it better or do something different with it. Kind of roll your own, do your own thing. So I created this SSL keys and I called it spy.pem. From there, I need also dash dash SSL.cert and it's also gonna be spy.pem. It's the same file. Next thing I need to do is start my listener, so dash NVLP, and I'm gonna use port 443 because that's the hole I made in my firewall, and again, to try to obfuscate that traffic that's happening there. Uh, I think that's all I need. I've got the port open, I'm using the right SSL keys, so now, if I get presented with the right port and the right key, then I should be good to go, I just have to wait. So what I did was, uh, oh, I did SSL.cert, that was a mistake. Let's go back, get dash cert. Dash should work a whole lot better. There we go. Now we can see it's listening on port, port three, 443, port 443, and it's just waiting for the connection. Now what I did with the Raz Pi was I made that scheduled task to run every two minutes. So at this point, we're just kind of playing a waiting game. If everything is working correctly, it's got a network connection on inside of a network. I'm on my cellular network. What we're looking at right here is I am SSH'd into AWS from my phone, which is on the Verizon network. It's not on our local uh, wireless network or even a wired network. We're SSH'd, we have the port open, we're waiting for the connection, two minutes. Again, this is just a waiting game, so we're gonna kind of fast forward things and, and wait for the good stuff to happen. So it'll be just a second and we'll just... <laughs> And we're back. Fine. I know it seems like forever. Two minutes doesn't seem like a long time until you're waiting for it on a YouTube video, right? And it seems like forever. But there we go. Hopefully that wasn't too long away for it. We do see the connection has come in. We should be blurring that information as well. Just <laughs> again, security, right? I won't do that. But if I do host name, host name, you'll see now I am connected to RP0, which is the RAS spy. And I can even run some Python, dash C, maybe get myself a little bit nicer of a shell. Let's see here, oop, that's not the right one, PTY. I cannot type, I'm having trouble today. Dot spawn, slash bin, slash bash. Oop, 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 oop. I need a, I need double quotes there, there we go. Slash bash. So sorry, you guys have to watch me type so horribly. There we go. And they look, now I've got a nice shell access. I can go even further to give myself a little more functionality. This can get a little janky if I'm idle for too long, but I am I can run things like Nmap now, and I am on that network. If I IP adder, there is the internal IP address right there, 10.0.12.241 on a slash 16. That's that's the internal IP address of that network. I'm in, I'm good to go. It was it was a lot of fun. This was a really cool project to make. I was really proud of it and I, I thought it might be inspiring to somebody out there to make something neat. 
right? Go that red team style, make something cool that you can use in an engagement or just have some fun with. And hopefully you've enjoyed it. I know I sure did. I'll try to have more in, in, in the future, but until then, thanks for watching.